I'm meteorologist Carly Gomez updating you on the extreme and long duration heat this week as well as next week. Now we are dealing with this extreme heat risk in the forecast expected to last even into next week as we are seeing this level of heat for a long duration of time with very little to no overnight relief, meaning temperatures are going to be in those low 70s overnight for the next few nights into our weekend. July 4th is here and we're going to be feeling the temperatures. Now, not only are we going to be feeling the heat from some of the fireworks out there, but we'll also be feeling that heat daytime as well as nighttime heat. Without effective cooling out there or hydration, everyone is feeling this. It doesn't matter if you have air conditioning or you don't. You're feeling the heat the moment you step outside. And our big weather impact here for this is that you are dealing with the heat for an excessive amount of time. Now, we could even see record conditions here, record setting conditions when it comes to the long heat wave. Now, we've already seen this going into effect for us starting on Tuesday. It has been extended now Wednesday through the following Tuesday, which would make that 11 full days. And that is the actual streak. 11 days is the record streak for temperatures over 100 degrees. Now, we could even see this extended past that 11 days into the following weekend. So yeah, a lot of heat still sticking around for us. Unfortunately, if we wanted to get some breaks, looks like it's going to take a while. And we are looking at temperatures between about 105 to 112 degrees. We have been closer to about that 105 to 108 degree range lately. But as we move from Friday to Saturday, that could be some of our peak heat as we'll see high pressure sitting over the region for a duration of about 24 to 36 hours. In that time, that is where we could see temperatures around 110 to 111 degrees or so. Now that major to extreme heat risk is not bringing us much when it comes to the overnight relief. So if you have plans for the 4th of July and even past that for the 4th weekend, you're going to want to have to rethink some things. Limiting time outdoors is going to be very beneficial for you and your family. Yes, it's good to cool off in the water or the pool, but even if you're at a house wanting to get inside and get some air conditioning is going to help as well. All right, let's talk about the excessive heat and heat warning in place. Now, we are seeing this from just north of Reading all the way down to areas of Bakersfield. Even Southern California is seeing this in some desert spots as well, lasting until 11 p.m. on Tuesday. And again, that's the following week, so we're still about a week away from that. Looking at Wednesday's highs versus the record temperatures. Now, Wednesday was expected to be a day. We saw temperatures around 110 degrees. That just didn't happen for us, which is actually relief here as we saw temperatures between about 105 to 107. Now, that doesn't mean some spots didn't reach 110 to 112. Depending on where you are or that thermometer may be recording your heat, that could be closer to tarmac. If you live in an area that's full of concrete, you probably did feel that heat. But to get a better estimate of the air temperature away from tarmac, away from that asphalt, we have to get a, an actual recording of this. Sacramento Executive Airport coming in at 105. Thermometer there is in an area where there is some cooling, effective cooling near grass, but also near the tarmac. So it's a little bit of a better reading for us. Downtown Sacramento at 107. Stockton 106, 107 Modesto. Here are the record temperatures. We were still anywhere from 3 to 7 degrees away from the record. So that's some good news. Yeah, triple digits are hot. The good news is we didn't break records, so that's pretty nice. Our departure from normal, this is where it's been a little scary for us. Typically, the normal temperature this time of year is right around 91 to 92 degrees. Now, we have been anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above average pretty much all of last month. But now we're looking at temperatures anywhere from 15 to 25 degrees above average. This is where it gets scary, and this is where all the watches, warnings, and advisories are in place. Moving into next week, Monday and Tuesday, this is where we're finally getting a little bit closer to average, but you're still above. But you're seeing 5 to 10 degrees above average at that point, which is, of course, still near triple digits. Now, our current 100 degree plus streak puts us at four days so far. Since Sunday, we've seen temperatures at 100 or more. We are expected to even push as late as Thursday into Friday of next week. That could see 100 degree day temperatures. Now, you look at all this, that would put us and extend us past that 11 day streak. So let's talk about these streaks. 11 days is the current longest stretch of 100 degree temperature set in 2006 in July, of course, which is where we are now. The longest stretch of 105 is in 2013, and that was seven days. 
Now, we are getting close to this longest stretch. These look like they actually might happen, but that's seven days. Uh, we're teetering on that. We may get close, though. The two-day one, this will be close and telling. If we get to this, this would probably be either Friday or Saturday, so the day after that 4th of July and then Saturday. This is where we could potentially tie the two-day streak of 110 plus. All right, let's look at the red flag warning. It did expire for valley spots today. We saw winds coming in out of the north today and moving into areas further north, just into north Sacramento, portions of uh, Stockton, West Stockton. That's where the red flag warning was in effect Tuesday to Wednesday, but that actually expired a little bit sooner, which is great for us because the wind started slowing down. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough to stop the Thompson fire. That was burning up closer to Oroville, where there was massive evacuations at one time, up to about 20,000 people evacuated. Yes, we do know some homes have unfortunately been burned, and we are seeing here that people are getting to go back to their homes, at least some zones, but that is the biggest concern. Now that the red flag warning is gone here, we're seeing uh, firefighters at least start to get a handle on some of these flames a little bit better. Unfortunately, the conditions are still very dry and very hot. Where we see the red flag warning still remain in effect is going to be for areas around Vacaville and Fairfield, just north here, into areas, portions of the coastal range, and that'll be Saturday till 9 p.m. So still very dry there, but also very gusty. Take a look. We'll see the winds beginning to push onshore once again. Rather than coming in from the north, we're now looking at at least an ocean breeze moving in. So it's good in the sense that you get your humidity levels a little bit higher, but the winds are still there. So anything that does spark and take off, could actually start running rampant when you get strong gusts like these. That's what we're seeing about 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. You see the color shades there into your Thursday evening, and that happens to be the 4th of July. And just take a look how it makes its way down south and hits portions of Sonora as well as areas just further south into the foothills uh, near Modesto, Stockton. So please be careful out there if you have any of those sparklers, any of the small fireworks. Even if you have the safe and sane fireworks, you want to have a bucket of water handy. Maybe even a fire extinguisher if you have that to make sure you're getting everything in the moment. If you can find an area where you're just completely surrounded by at least asphalt, whether it's a parking lot or anything of that, away from grass, away from fences, anything that could catch fire, that would be ideal. Uh, I'd like to see less fireworks out there, honestly, and leave it to the big commercial shows if that's the deal. But, you know, everyone is allowed to have their own fun and safe fireworks shows. So just please be safe, especially when the winds. They start picking up into the evening hours at 7 p.m. We're going to see the fireworks uh, closer to about 8.39 as that uh, sun sets at that time. Now, as we take a look into Friday night, this is where we start seeing some more of the winds pushing on shore. And luckily, again, we're not seeing any uh, fanning of the flames up there near Orville so much uh, near the Thompson fire. So, again, that is some good news. I want you to keep an eye on the orange shades here. The darker the orange, the hotter it is. You know, you're looking at the ridge building up overhead Saturday, and that pinpoint, that bullseye, when we look at the orange, is right overhead northern California as we move from Friday to Saturday. And that is where we're looking at the potential for the hottest temperatures of the week. Now, this will gradually start to shift to the east, but notice how long it takes to do so. We're already into next week before it even starts to make its way to the east and that is why we're in this big concern here is because it's taking so long this is where we're seeing that triple digit heat lasting for a very long period of time and finally as we start moving toward the end of next week we we see a little bit more of a budge just not enough yet to get us out of the triple digits till potentially the following weekend all right let's take a look here in our foothills spots about 102 in groveland expected tomorrow but Temperatures between 106 to 110 from Sonora to Ione. So that's that potential for that massive heat up there in areas of the foothills and lower foothills spots as you approach Valley. Upper 70s to low 80s from San Francisco to Oakland. So still above average for them with about 107 in Vacaville. The Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley spots, again, we are looking at some hot temperatures for the 4th of July. About 108 to 112 potentially out there. So again, please be safe. I cannot say this enough just because of how hot it is and just how prone we are to burning up. You don't want your house burned down, your neighbor's house, things like that. Just protect each other. Make sure you guys are all staying safe. All right, as we look into our 4th of July, let's uh, plan this out for you. 6 p.m., we're still in the triple digits. About 95 degrees, around 8 p.m., depending on where you are, but that's going to be up in the foothill spots. We're looking at temperatures still around, right around 99 to 102, I'd say around 8 p.m., 
10 p.m. we could start seeing temperatures in the lower 90s, but foothills, they're looking at about 80 degree temperatures. Now looking over the next three days, our big weather impact days are going to last for at least the next six to seven days. We're seeing a lot of red out there with temperatures around 110 to 111 Friday, Saturday. Then check this out. We move past the weekend here and you're still at 108 on Sunday. Finally, moving into next week, you're getting Monday and Tuesday at 106, 104. And we stop it here, even though Wednesday's at 104, because the National Weather Service does have Tuesday as the last day issued for that excessive heat warning. I do think that should be extended one more day. So we'll wait and see whether or not they do that because we are still looking at a lot of heat on Wednesday, finally dropping off into that following weekend, but you're still looking at triple digit temperatures that Friday. So if we end up hitting triple digits all the way through Friday, looks like we will beat that long streak potentially of 100 degree days.